major outcome measures in MS clinical trials are relapse rate reduction, and that's the, the most common uh, metric used for pivotal studies, that are studies you're going to take to the FDA. Uh, maybe more importantly as an outcome measure is reduction in disability accumulation, but it's a harder outcome to reach, especially in early MS because not that many people develop enough disability to measure it. And then we support that with MRI metrics, decrease the number of gadolinium enhancing lesions, decrease the number of T2 lesions, and also decrease in the rate at which uh, brain volume is lost. For progressive MS studies, uh, the major measure is, is disability progression, and that is reducing disability progression. You could secondarily look at improvement, but that's usually not the goal of most of the progressive studies, although there are a few now that are starting to look at improvement instead of just lessening, uh, worsening. Uh, the major MRI metrics aren't as critical in progressive disease. You want to see them going the same direction. Maybe the, the one that's most important is changes in brain volume, uh, whole brain volume as well as gray and white uh, segmented volume. In day-to-day -day practice, we measure success more broadly than we do in clinical trials uh, because a clinical trial is a very uh, controlled environment. And in day-to-day -day practice, there's many different things that could impact how a patient responds to the agent and also how we would gauge success. So in some people, it may be more endurance. In others, it may be being able to walk farther. In others, it may be able to continue working. Um, we're always looking to make sure that they're not having ongoing relapses, and we look to make sure that their MRI scans aren't getting worse because both of those would be metrics that would suggest that we need to maybe change therapy. So brain volume is a useful metric when you're looking at groups. And we've done it in almost all of our modern clinical trials and shown that it tends to have a favorable outcome. It's much more difficult to utilize in day-to-day -day practice because brain volume fluctuates a lot from day to day, and it depends on your hydration status and how much alcohol you had over the weekend and too many things that it's not yet ready for prime time use in monitoring individual patients on a day-to-day -day basis or even a month or year-to-year -year basis. We've gotten very good at measuring the outcomes and that's why we have so many approved agents because once you have a successful clinical trial, you build on that and you get to see what works and what doesn't work. So we have very reliable metrics. For example, uh, the phase two proof of principle study we do for anti-inflammatory agents in relapsing MS where we're looking at reduction in either gadolinium enhancing lesions and or new T2 lesions is so reliable that anytime an agent has succeeded in that phase two and has gone on to phase three, they've succeeded in phase three. So we have good metrics. Moving forward, we want to see agents that give us better protection of the degenerative phase of MS. We're pretty good at turning off the inflammation, but we need to get to the underlying tissue damage. And then the next horizon is repairing the damage that's done. So we want to turn off the damage and then repair what's there. And we have strategies working on both of those, um, things like molecules to enhance repair and stem cell therapies, the early phase studies, but, but are getting underway to hopefully improve recovery.